presented. Second trimester and then every two. I do the same thing I told you that I never would. I told you I changed, even when I knew I never could. I know that I can't find nobody else as good as you. I need you to stay, need you to stay. I get drunk, wake up, I'm wasted still. I realize the time that I wasted. I feel like you can't feel the way I feel. If you can't be right here. Oh, 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 if you can be right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And today is a Tuesday. It's around 10.30 and I picked up some sushi, which I'll get into shortly. But as you would have seen, I've just been doing some study. We're currently in our last week of our perinatal and women's health rotation, which is more commonly known as obstetrics, gynecology and neonatology, those specialty fields. And last week I was on night shifts and this week is now neonatal intensive care unit. The only class that I have today is I have a tutorial at one o'clock with one of the consultants and we'll be talking through a few case studies. So these next couple of weeks are a bit of a busy period. We have our final week of rotation and then next week we'll have our end of rotation exams. And then following that we have one week of Stuvac or study vacation. And then we have an entire week of final year exams. But right now I'm going to work on my research project. I'm involved in patient recruitment and because we're doing a lot of it via telehealth, I'll be making a few calls to some patients. We'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get onto that now. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to those questions soon about climbing up hills. And have you ever had attacks of wheezing in the past three months? Hey guys, so I'm back home. It is about 3.45 and we finished our shoot a bit over an hour ago. And it was basically one of the consultants coming in and there was five students, yeah, five of us. And so we went through four different um, case studies and the topics were on intrauterine growth restriction, meconium aspiration syndrome, respiratory distress syndrome, and jaundice in a neonate. So we went through the patient notes and the file, how they presented, how they were managed and where their progress is now. So we did that as a group at the hospital. Then we're gonna regroup again on Thursday later in the week to talk through them with the consultant and hopefully he can fill in all the gaps in our knowledge. So right now I've got some food, having a little bit of a late lunch, then I might take a little bit of a break and try to get on to some study. All right guys, I just finished the workout. It was pool day, so I'm using this app called Strong, which records all the exercises, and let's click finish. Boom, done. Finished a few practice questions and I was noticing that gastroenterology was not a very good <laughs> discipline for me, so I'll have to come back and do more revision for that. But it's approaching seven o'clock and I have a tutoring session with a student of mine and we're going through interview practice, uh, medicine interview practice, and I'm gonna do a little bit of preparation for that and then I'll join the Zoom. I liked the first response. How does this make you feel? And I liked how you start off with actually disappointed. You didn't, you didn't immediately put the blame on the other students. You said, You're, you yourself take responsibility for that because maybe you just performed poorly regardless of what everybody else did. So I like that it was more introspection rather than looking for, for blame. That was, that was nice. All the best, take care. Alrighty, so the session is finished and I am now very, very hungry because dinner has been delayed. So I'm gonna grab some food in a bit and then after dinner, I'll probably just veg out, watch some Netflix and relax. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I know I 
So we don't actually have any scheduled class today. It's a pretty light week, but that's also good because it means we have more time to study. So I'm treating today as a full study day and I'm actually visiting Deb. So I've just arrived at her place and I'll probably work through gastroenterology and maybe cardiology because those were two topics that I wasn't so crash hot yesterday. So Deb's waiting for me inside, so I'm gonna head. All right guys, so I've just unpacked my things, but I wanted to quickly talk about some approaches that I've been using when it comes to exams. And the first tip is creating a study timetable. So this doesn't have to be a physical thing that you've written down. It could be as simple as having a mental note of what's coming next. So for me, I know that I wanna do cardio and gastro today, and that will be the focus. Tip two is to give yourself enough time to prepare. So if you're a quick learner or a fast learner, you might need two weeks or eight weeks to prepare. Whatever it is, by giving yourself enough time means that you won't be stressed on the exam day and you can think more clearly when answering the question. Tip three is to focus on your weaknesses, not your strengths. So a lot of people get caught up on what they're good at and when they're doing the practice questions for those topics, they're smashing it and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be a gun for this exam but they miss all the things they don't know, all the things that they haven't put time towards. Because if you focus on your strong areas, you might only improve your score by one or two marks. But by focusing on your weak areas, there's gonna be so many marks that you can pick up. Next tip is to find resources that work for you. So for me with practice questions, I've been using things like Pass Medicine and QuizMed. And then for more information resources, I've been using things like Toronto Notes and online resources like Up to Date and electronic therapeutic guidelines, which has all the management guidelines that we use in Australia. And finally, this is something that everybody knows that they should be doing, but we sometimes neglect during exam time, and that's getting good sleep and also exercising. They've both been shown to be good for memory and for cognitive health. But anyways, with a lot out of the way, let's get into some practice questions. So I've changed locations. Deb removed me out of her room because she has an online class and she's reclaimed her desk. But I'm having a little bit of a lunch break and I wanted to quickly talk about what topics were being assessed on. So I have four exams for my final end of year exams covering internal medicine, surgery, and then our two specialty blocks, general practice and obstetrics and gynecology. And I've been really focusing on surgery and internal medicine because they themselves encompass all these different subspecialties. So in internal medicine, you have things like cardiology, rheumatology, infectious diseases. And then in surgery, you have um, cardiothoracics, orthopedics. Um, this, is, this is such a vast amount of content to learn. And I think that's the reality with exams is that you will never be able to know everything. And so my approach is always to try learn first principles, try learn the fundamentals, so that if you're thrown a curveball in the exam, you can always work backwards and try your best to get the answer. So there's still plenty of things to cover, so let's get back to it. Hey guys, um, before we move on with the vlog, I want to quickly talk about today's video sponsor, LG. So LG kindly sent me over the LG Gram, which is their latest laptop, and I've got the 16-inch version here. I've been using it for about six months, and I've been absolutely loving it. 
It's got a minimal sleek design. It's got a black finish, which really complements all the rest of my other tech. And the performance on this thing is incredible. So it's got an i7 processor, 512 gig SSD and 16 gigs of RAM, meaning that um, I can work through any video editing, play video games, and it's just great for anything that I need to do in medical school. It's also got a great display, a 2560 by 1600 resolution display, meaning that if you're needing to watch um, video content or doing a Netflix binge, it just looks really crisp and really nice. But hands down, one of the best features about this laptop is how lightweight it is. It's only 1.2 kilos, and for a bigger laptop, that makes it, I think, the, the Guinness World Record holder for the lightest 16 inch laptop. It's also got a great battery life, so I've been using this thing on my hospital rotations when I'm out of the house. I'll be using it for six, eight, 12 hours, and this thing will pretty much last the whole day. I've had no problems charging it, and if you're away on a trip, um, this thing will be great. And if you're not a fan of the black finish or this laptop feels too big for you, the LG Gram also comes in a 14 inch version in white and a 17 inch version. So if you wanna read more about the full LG Gram lineup, be sure to check out the links in the description below. So this morning we have an OSCE revision session. And for those of you who don't know what an OSCE is, it stands for Objective Structured Clinical Examination. And it's basically a series of little mini stations. For us, they last about eight minutes where we'll be tested on a different clinical scenario. So I'm having mine next week and we'll have three stations, one covering the theme of um, gynecology, the other on obstetrics and one on neonatology. An example in obstetrics might be a lady post labor who's just given birth to a baby and she's having a postpartum hemorrhage which means after the delivery she's having some sort of bleed and then you'll be asked to take a history and do a quick examination and you might be trying to look for the different causes of a postpartum hemorrhage and the four causes can be remembered by using the four T's so that stands for trauma, tone, tissue and thrombin. So tone, for example, that's the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage, and that's when the uterine's not contracting enough. And one of the management options for that is to give the mother syntocinol. If you're thinking about tissue, that might be a retained placenta. So you wanna make sure that the third stage of labor had no complications, and you're looking at the placenta itself to see if the membranes are intact and there's no ragged edges. If you're thinking about trauma, you might want to look for a perineal tear. And depending on the grade of the tear, if it was a grade three or grade four tear, a grade three tear is when you have the tear through the vaginal epithelium and perineal muscles and then into the external anal sphincter, you might need to go to theater to suture the wound. And finally, thrombin. So this would be screened before the woman went into labor and it's looking for any coagulation disorders. But anyways, the class is about to start, so I'm gonna run over there now. Usually you'll have a booking visit at eight to 12 weeks yep. and you'll do a full blood count, you'll do a menstruating urine, you'll take blood groups. Yep. And then you'll usually follow up with an 11 to 13 week yep. uh, nuchal translucency scan or a combined test. Yep. They do now with the two bloods as well. 18 to 20 weeks, you'll have the morphology scan. And, and you'll also be having every six weeks, I think at the in the first trimester, two to three weeks in the second trimester, and then every two, one to two weeks in the third trimester, you'll have visits in between. Is that commonly done or only in high risk? I'm back in my room and I've changed into something a little bit more comfortable and my hair has got so long because in lockdown the hairdressers are closed so I haven't been able to visit a barber in like three months. But anyways, as you would have seen, we had our Oscar revision session in the morning and it was really good. How it ran was it went for about three and a half hours and there was a doctor there with a bunch of our students. There was about eight or nine of us and we were each given the chance to do a mock Oscar. So my station was a lady who was 28 weeks pregnant coming in with non-specific symptoms of abdominal pain and a little bit of vaginal discharge. And after taking a brief history, we later find out that on speculum examination, she has pooling in the posterior fornix, which points to you that this could be premature rupture of the membranes. And then you have to talk through some management options. So that was really helpful. And right now, there's not too much planned for the rest of the afternoon. I'm aiming to do some light study and a bit of OSCE practice and also a gym session. And once that's all done, I'll then relax and watch some TV.
Fridays are usually our teaching days, so we'd come into hospital and they'd have some sort of lectures, seminars or tutorials ready for us. But because we're at the end of rotation and exams are coming up soon, we don't have anything formally scheduled today. The reason why I'm in hospital is because I had a rescheduled class that was meant to be yesterday, but is now this morning. And it's covering those neonatal intensive care unit cases that we were talking through earlier in the week. We might also go over some things like neonatal resuscitation, how to do a formal neonatal examination, which has to be done before any baby and mother is discharged. And right now it's about five to nine. The class is starting very soon. So I'm gonna make my way over there. So during the antenatal period, what was her diet? Was she smoking? Was she taking any drugs? Was the growth steady the whole time? Did it change or deviate off course during like the middle of the pregnancy? Did she have appropriate supplements throughout? If, if it was a twin pregnancy or if it was singleton, if she's had a previous history of intrauterine growth restriction, if she had any trauma or injuries during the pregnancy, Our last tutorial was on the examination of a newborn baby. So how to go through a top to toe assessment. So from the head, looking at things like their head circumference, um, looking in the eyes for any signs of congenital cataracts, the mouth, the high arch palate or cleft lip, then a normal cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal examination. And then going further down below, um, looking for normal genitalia, if there's an imperforate anus, looking at their feet for clubbed foot. And as you would have seen before, we were also going through um, how to do a hip examination. So doing things like the Barlow maneuver or the Ortolani maneuver. So the Barlow maneuver, I think, is when you're trying to see if the hip can be dislocated. And the Ortolani maneuver is when you're trying to put a dislocated hip back in the joint. I'll have to double check, I think that's correct. And I've just arrived at Deb's house. She also just finished at the hospital. So all that's left is just exams and study. So I'm gonna get onto some revision now. So we just finished dinner and it's about 8.30 right now. I'm gonna do a little bit more revision and then Deb and I are gonna watch uh, season three of Money Heist. I think it's called La Casa del Papel in Spanish, probably butchered it. <laughs> uh, sorry to the Spanish viewers out there. But big thanks again to LG for sponsoring this video and that will bring an end to Nikki Week and end to Ob's Gain. A few more days until my exam, so still a lot of prep to do. And if you guys are preparing for your own exam, best of luck, hope you smash it and keep up all that revision. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And until next time, this is Sebastian, stay sharp.